Okay, so now we are going to visit fluid mechanics from the simplest case to the more complicated cases. So now we are going to start from the very simple case and getting more complexity of the behavior of the fluid. Okay, that's the approach that we are going to do. And the first, the simplest case that we are going to consider here is hydrostatics. This is a, an, a word that came from, come from, comes from the Greek, uh, the Greek, Greek name that comes from hydro, water, statics, uh, I mean, no addressed. So this is, in that case, that can be generalized to the concept fluid addressed. Fluids addressed, that mean, addressed meaning not exactly not moving, but meaning something specific that I'll tell you now. Okay, so now let's consider the general case in which we have a, a spatial distribution of the velocities along time. So that would be the spatial description of the velocity. And now we consider a specific case. First, imagine that we are in a case in which the velocity is uniform. What does that mean, uniform? You remember that, that when the velocity doesn't depend on time, we say that we are in the velocity is stationary or steady state, okay? And on the other hand, when the velocity doesn't depend on the, the spatial coordinates, we call that uniform in spatial descriptions or homogeneous in material descriptions. So let's consider the uniform velocity case. So the velocity, the velocity only depends on time, is the same in all places. So that means typically that that means that a situation like that, the velocity is the same everywhere. Everywhere, okay? That's the, doesn't mean exactly the rest, okay? The velocity is the same everywhere, but even the, we can have some acceleration or so, some variation of the velocity along time, okay? So that's the case. Okay, what happens in that case? Well, the gradient of the velocity, since it implies derivative with respect to space, are zero. So the rate of the strain, which one half of the grain of the velocity plus it's transposed, is also zero. So the stresses account for Newtonian fluids have this term that depends on D, which is zero, and this term, which is zero. So finally, the stresses are equal to minus P times one. This is what we generally define for any continuum medium as the hydrostatic, straight, hydrostatic stress state. Is that the case that we are considering? No. So even if in that case we have a hydrostatic stress state, which is the case of uniform velocity, fluids that are moving, okay, but are moving with a velocity that changes a long time. Okay? This is not the case. Even with the st stress state is one scalar times the unity, so we just denote these stress state a hydrostatic stress state. This doesn't mean that this case corresponds to what we are going to call hydrostatics. Hydrostatics requires another assumption, is that velocity doesn't depend on the space, but also doesn't depend on time. So the velocity is constant, okay? So the velocity is constant, then the acceleration which has the local derivative plus the convective derivative, this convective derivative was zero also in this case. But that, that uh, local derivative was not zero in the case. So in this case here, uniform velocity, accelerations are not zero. Accelerations are not zero. It's the case that I showed you. It's just even the velocity is uniform. All particles of the body have the same acceleration, but but I have the same velocity, but that velocity is not constant, so there is some accelerations, okay? This is not hydrostatics. Hydrostatics is when, when the velocity is constant, not necessarily zero. So, for instance, this case here, imagine that we have just a container here with some, with some water inside, okay? Velocity is zero everywhere. Well, zero. Huh? zero with respect to the reference system 
of the Earth, but the Earth is moving with respect to the Sun, and the Sun is moving with respect to the galaxy. So what means no velocity? It depends on the system. So we are not talking about zero velocity. We are talking about constant velocity. Okay? So this object, field of water or water, whatever, moving at constant velocity, at constant velocity, at constant velocity, that is also considered hydrostatic. Okay? Of course, in a specific case, if when that constant velocity is zero, and then is where the hydrostatic case uh, takes the name from, is the water at rest. Okay? Well, so we are considering that case, in which, in that case, the pressure is then called the hydrostatic pressure. The trace of the stresses is the pressure which is, which is uh, minus 3p0. So the mean pressure, which is one third of that, is equal to the, the hydrostatic pressure. So in this case, in this case, we also had, had seen that in the previous chapter, the mean pressure equals the hydrostatic, the thermo, thermodynamic pressure, and they are both equal to the hydrostatic pressure. And of course, the stress state is hydrostatic in the sense that it is equal to a constant equal times the unity. So this uh, is a hydrostatic uh, tensor, so that's a hydrostatic stress state, but the acceleration is equal to zero. Okay? So that's the case that we're going to consider. Fluids at rest. Well, not exactly at rest. Fluids at constant velocity. Okay. So now let's visit the equations. This is a specific case of uh, fluid uh, with, with dense constant density. Okay? So we assume that we have the uh, barotropic case, an incompressible fluid, etc. So, well, no, we, we, don't, we don't consider that. We just, it, that's, a, that's, a, that's a result. Looking at the continuity equation, since velocity is constant, the grain is equal to zero, so the material derivative, the material derivative of the density is equal to zero, that means that the density is constant, is constant a long time. So density can be not homogeneous, the fluid can have more or less density, more or less dense uh, parts, but that, that density doesn't change about time. About time. Okay? So it's a typical case of fluid, not incompressible, but whose density is not changing. So as a consequence, any fluid in a hydrostatic, hydrostatic state doesn't change its density. Okay? That's the first one. So that equation is very simple in that case. It's just solved. The density is known, and it's the initial density of the fluid, of the, of the particle. No, look at the second equation, linear momentum balance. In that case, what we have here? Well, the right-hand side term, the one referring to the acceleration, is zero. Because we are considering, we have considered that the velocities are zero. The velocities are constant, so the rate of the velocities are zero. So the equations look like that. And looking at the third equation, since the rate of a strain tensor are zero, the stress is equal, we have seen that, by definition, equal to minus the hydrostatic pressure times the unity. Okay, so these are the three equations. In fact, this is already solved, so we just we skip that one, and we look at these two ones. Okay, from this equation, if we take the symmetric, the, the deep divergence of the stresses, it can be readily proved, that's something you have in the book, and that's an exercise that you also did, I, I remember in the Introductory, introductory chapter on algebra, tensorial algebra, the gradient of a hydrostatic tensor is equal to the divergence sorry, of the hydrostatic tensor is equal to the gradient of the scalar. So that's something that can be readily proved. We have the proof in the, in the book. Then di divergence of sigma, that term here, divergence of sigma, can be written then as a gradient of the P0, the hydrostatic pressure. So finally, that equation can be written like that. Minus gradient of P0, which comes out from that, 
plus rho zero b is equal to zero. Look, what is that? It's a partial differential equation. Well, how many unknowns we have here? The only unknown <coughs> is p. p is something that we don't know a priori. We don't know p, but we know b. We know rho zero, because rho zero is the initial density. So we know that. So that equation is an equation that is the fundamental equation of hydrostatics. And it's a partial differential equation that can be solved very easily. It's a just one unknown, the pressure. And then it can be solved, and then it provides the pressure. Once we know the pressure, we know the, the, the stresses, and we know the pressure, the stresses, and the velocity is zero, by definition, we know, and the, and the density is constant. We know everything. So we can just to solve that equation here. Okay? This is the simplest case. Moreover, these equations can be solved analytically in many cases. What is the most common case for this equation? Look. Let's consider when the body forces here are the gravity forces. So when the fluid is subjected to the gravity forces. By the way, this is most 99.99% .99 of our cases. What are we studying generally as civil engineers? Fluid, which is water. How is this water moving on the earth surface in our in our canals, in our, in our uh, pipes, in our rivers, in our, I mean. And what is the body forces acting on this, on this case? In that case is the body forces are the gravity forces. If we take a system of coordinates with the axis z perpendicular to the center of the earth, then the component of this body forces vector is 0, 0 minus g. So for water, at rest hydrostatic water, so water in our reservoirs, for instance, we can apply this equation B being 0, 0 minus G. So how this equation looks like? Look, P is something that depends on X, Y, and Z. That's what we want to determine. It doesn't depend on time. Why? Because the problem is stationary. Okay. So the pro they doesn't depend on time. It doesn't depend on time. So this equation can be specified now in three equations. First one, derivative of P0 with respect to X plus the component rho 0 B with G0 is equal to 0. What is this equation saying? Well, that it says that the, the pressure doesn't depend on X because its derivative with respect to X is 0. So the pressure only depends on y and z. Second equation. Now, derivative of P0 with respect to y, so P0 now we know it's a function of y and z, plus rho 0 vi, which is 0, because by B, B, is equal to 0, is equal to 0. What does that mean? That the pressure doesn't depend on y either. So the pressure is only a function of z. It's just the pressure it's a function that only changes in the direction, vertical directions, what we call vertical with respect to the Earth's surface. And finally, the third equation said that minus derivative of P is that function of Z with respect to Z. Now, that is a total differential equation because there is just one unknown here. Minus this component is minus rho zero G is equal to zero. So look, what is the function depending on Z? whose derivative is derivative of rho zero g. Well, is that function, is a linear function. So integration of that equation says that the distribution of pressure in hydrostatics, when the body forces are gravitational forces, is a linear distribution on z. Okay? Z and there appears a constant here. How do we determine this constant? Well, for determining this constant, we need to know the pressure at a certain point of a certain altitude, a certain value of z. So what is this? Something that probably you have already acquainted with. Imagine you have an, uh, 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 that we have a dam, okay? And then we want to compute what is the distribution of pressures of the fluid at the reservoir which is contained by the dam. 
This is a hydrostatic case. The gravity forces are the one acting here, the body forces. So that equation is applicable. So the distribution of pressure is a linear distribution. Okay? By the way, what is the value of z? Well, imagine that at a certain point, typically what we assume is that the, at the free surface, at the upper part of the reservoir, we know the pressure. What is this pressure here? Zero. Zero, well, being more strict would be the atmospherical pressure. Okay? But if we neglect the atmospherical pressure, then it's zero. So by imposing that, by taking the, 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 the zero, uh, uh, the, 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 this plane, the, this point at the basis of the dam, at for, for z equal h, so the height of the uh, water column, the water column here has a height h, is zero. So by employing that, we think the zero is that, the, the constant c, sorry, is that one. So finally, what do we obtain? The distribution of the pressure along the height of the water column, which is that. Look that for h equals z, so at this upper part, is the pressure is equal to zero. And otherwise, it's a linear distribution like that. It's what we call the triangular distribution of pressure. And this is a very important result for us as engineers. Whenever we don't want to compute any structure, any solid, typically the solid which is a dam, which is surrounded by water, and this water is addressed, and we can assume that the gravity forces are the ones acting on this water, we know what is the actions of the water on the solid. What is this water, these actions? A pressure distribution, which is, by the way, triangular, like one, being zero at the free surface. Whatever this surface is, by the way, whatever here the surface is, is, is drawn vertically, vertical, but even if it's not vertical, the distribution is always following this law. More specifically, if we consider that this um, uh, water that also acts through uh, uh, filtration to the basis of the dam, the distribution of here of the pressure is also a constant distribution. Why is it constant here? Because the component Z doesn't change here. Z is constant here. So I can plot the pressure distribution on all the surfaces of the dam in that way. And after that, I can compute the dam and the equilibrium of the dam. In fact, I can design the dam and see, for instance, the damping of the dam with respect to that point. So if the pressure, if, the, if that weight, which is acting on the dam, is not balanced by, or in other words, no, the weight acting on the gravity center of the dam doesn't balance these forces with respect to that point, that could be a damping of the, uh, of the rotation of the dam with respect to point, which is something which is a design criterion for the dam, avoiding damping of the dam with respect to that point. Okay? And the second criterion is to avoid a sliding of the dam. So if the possible friction provided by the dam with respect to these forces is not enough, the water could push the dam and then we could lose the stability of the dam. So uh, what I mean with that is that once we know the actions of the water on the boundaries of the dam, then we can design the dam. Okay? And why do we know these actions? Well, in that case, it's very easy because this water here is at rest, is at hydrostatic state case. And then, after that, the distribution of the pressure is constant. It's, it's not constant, it's linear. Okay?